Hi, Christine. I I know that complimenting your background means like, oh, we're calling out that you're at the and that's why we drink apartment, but it is a very professional looking background. Is it? Oh, I don't I feel like I I'm just like I look just like looks I'm so clean and like orderly and you know it's clean because we're we don't come here a lot together to cause right. chaos. Right. Well, so. right. If I showed up at all, I think it would be a disaster. But <laughs> I will say, like the last couple episodes, you've been in your mom's basement. So this is just kind of a nice, like lighting wise. It's just kind of a oh, step up. Thank you. I actually do really like the lighting in here, and I it's, it's very like, nice. It's just the ceiling light, which never happens. And also, it's you know, I don't know. You're right. It does look nice in here. I don't it know is. what I'm it's being nice all poo-pooey about. Um, well, thank you, Christine. Yeah. So I. <laughs> We got home and our internet's out. So we're staying here for a couple of nights now. A so. couple nights? They can't fix it that fast? That sucks. No, they, the closest appointment they had was like three days ahead. So What the was, hell? I think that was it. I don't know. It, it was unnecessarily long. So we got back and we were like, oh, we just want to relax. And then we had to, we literally within 20 minutes of being there, we're like, well, we can't be here without internet. So we just <laughs> left. <laughs> Well, it's lucky that this other apartment we have uh, is close by. It worked it like so close by, like crazy close by. So um, it feels it's fun. We've actually there have been a few times where Allison and I have come here just to like, quote, get away. It feels like a little a vacation. Staycation. It feels like a staycation. So uh, got some uh, we got some dinner delivered last night. We watched a little Selling Sunset because, you know, I love my drama and my stories. Of course. Um, but yeah, that was it. How have you been, Christine? Oh, um, thank you for asking. I have been okay. Oh, do you want to ask why I drink? I'll just go to that. Yeah. Is there... Okay. Why do you drink, Christine? Sorry. Hey, hey, say your line. Here, say your line now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, um, thank you for asking that totally unprompted question. Um, I drink this week <laughs> because um, I finally, finally got the nerve to call my doctor and schedule an appointment because I've been like really, really tired. And of course it's kind of like, duh, you have a baby, you know, but mm -hmm. it's tired in a way where I'm like, it's something's wrong, you know? Oh, okay. And I'll sleep like during on Blaze's days off, I'll sleep like 10 hours straight and be still miserably tired always. So oh, I went shit. to the doctor and so I called Friday and they were like, well, we have an opening Monday. And I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. That works out. Yeah, I'm coming in. And so I came in and he was like, and I was like, oh, also I have this terrible hip pain all the time and I can barely walk on it sometimes. And so Bro, what? Okay. I, this is also the first time I'm hearing about these things. I'm just full of ailments always. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just in pain, you know? And so I walked out of the office with uh, an order of like 10 vials of blood work and an mm. x-ray order. And they were like, oh, it's just right down the hall. So I just walked down the hall. They got my blood. I walked downstairs to the second floor, got my x-ray, left in like 20 minutes. And that night, all my results came back. And I was like, what is this magical? Sorry, are you somewhere else with like universal <laughs> health care or something? Yeah, I know. Like, What is going on? I think it's because it's uh, at the... Uh, I guess I shouldn't say where it is. So maybe I don't know. Some version of an urgent clinic, maybe. No, no, no. It's like uh, it's let's just say it's university level uh -huh. healthcare. So maybe that's why. But oh, I don't maybe. know. I really don't know because I have been in a lot of different healthcare systems and they're not usually this efficient. Um, but so I I found out that my iron is very low and I've had anemia in the past. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I got it checked. And now he's prescribing me iron supplements and potentially, and I don't think I'll have to get an iron infusion. I've had those in the past, but I just remember how much it helped when I got it in the past. So I'm just really happy. I finally, you know, bit the bullet, got checked out, um, got low iron and my hip. Apparently I just have like really swollen, uh, he said there's no like joint disease or anything. I just have like really swollen, I don't know, hips. It's just going to get issues. worse as you get older. He just said, um, I need physical therapy. So I'm going to oh. do that too. So and anyway. Probably mental therapy, by the and, way. But <laughs> Well, I'm already doing that. That was priority <laughs> number one, my friend. Well, wow. I'm sorry. I, you're, I, hmm. I had no idea about any of that, but I'm, I'm glad you're doing better like, now. Like on Friday, I was like, I'm finally just going to get over my stupid phone thing and call and it was very easy and they were like come in monday and then Isn't by that monday a bitch? night like, i had a result i know i know it's uh, there's a i mean like for all the times that i've like for all the doctor's appointments i've been going to recently 
and the fact that I could have just picked up a phone years ago. Could have just done it. It's embarrassing. Like it's like it's that weird shamey part of mental illness of like man like I only shot myself in the foot for the last several years but also it's like I could there's nothing I could have done I could have gotten that bullet out of my foot years ago and I just couldn't I <laughs> honestly just couldn't if a real bullet, bullet was in my foot I probably still wouldn't call a doctor same I'd be like I'm fine I'd be like it's this not is not a my, big deal this is the new me so I'd be like oh but I'm in therapy and it's like that's not gonna f- <laughs> fix it <laughs> Uh, anyway this is your sign if you're out there and you're like gosh something feels wrong i don't feel well even if it's something vague like I, my hip hurt and i kept being like whatever i'll just stretch and blaze was like you need to go get that seen in case you don't want it to get worse and so finally i was like you know what i'm just gonna do it the worst that happens is he says oh you need to stretch or the worst that happens with my tiredness is he says uh i don't know you need to stop drinking so much i mean that would be a disaster really the worst he could say is like a, a lot a lot worse a lot worse <laughs> Ex- could say like we need to take your hip out okay you're completely <laughs> right the worst he could say i guess what I, yeah you know what i take it back the worst he i know could what say. you're saying i'm just being an asshole i know what you're <laughs> no, saying No, but you're right um but yeah so if this this is your sign if you're like something feels off but i don't know if it's worth going to the doctor just go to your primary care if you don't have one i didn't for a long time just like call an office and be like, hey, you know, if you have insurance, uh, if you're lucky enough to have insurance, it's such a nightmare out there. So don't worry. Mm-hmm. I know that it's expensive and nightmarish. So if you are not able to do that, I understand. But if what's holding you back is what's holding me back, which was just like, I don't want to make the call. I don't feel like putting the time aside. Um, This is your sign to just do it. Try it. You know, it's wild. I've well, I've always um. It's, I'll, I guess I'll take it as my sign because for a while I've been wondering if I should go to a sleep clinic because of how wild my sleep habits yeah. are. But I, I mean, so I've had with all this, all the, these stupid doctor things, I've gotten probably every single vial of blood pulled out of me at yeah. this point. And they didn't find anything wrong in any of my blood work. Like they're like, my iron's fine and all that. But so now I'm like, well, okay, then I feel like I need to go to a sleep clinic because this is That was the thing he said. If my blood if my uh blood levels were all normal the next thing they would look into is a sleep clinic so it, it's worth and you know what i did is i downloaded this app and i can't believe i'm telling you about this um what? it's called shut eye and i know my brother and renee have used it uh in the past um my brother talks in his sleep renee does too and like makes all sorts of noises um and so i was like oh this will be interesting because he said well maybe you have sleep apnea and you don't realize it so i was mm. like i'm just gonna download this and see and it basically just like records your sleep i've seen people use it on tiktok for like yeah it's like yeah funny bits yeah um what do you sleep I'm, apnea i'm really afraid of what it showed me this morning what did it show you? Were you doing I, that thing again where you spit in the air and catch it in your mouth? No. I was like, oh, at least that I'll know what that is. I think I'm a, taken over by a demon in the middle of the night. I'm scared to play. I'm going to play the sound for you. This is what I did in the middle of the night. Okay. Should I play it? Yes. I didn't even show it to my mom and Blaze because I was so like freaked out. And now I'm going to play it for everybody listening to the podcast. God. And by the way, that that spitting up into the air and catching it was a one-time situation but as far as, um, I, as It far was as actually a two-time situation. <laughs> <laughs> because I told Renee all about it. And then that, that fucking next, that night we were on vacation in Palm Springs. She took a video of me doing it. And it's anyway. Uh, it's impressive. Okay, play this weird sound. I'm scared of it. Um, okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna play it for you, but like, don't, don't stop t- being my friend. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna play it. Here it is. Mm. Are you farting? Mm. <laughs> no, it's going through my mouth. Mm. I sound like a cow demon. It sounds like it's like something's bellowing out am of me. Am I you. dying? Like, I'm like, is that sleep? Like, what's happening? It sounded like a, well, that's, I thought it was a little toot because it Ooh. sounded like boom. It sounded like your butt had something to say. No, but, because I'm, I mean, I probably was also doing that, but I was under a comforter <laughs> and a sheet and a weighted blanket. So that I, that sounded, I, it sounded like a, it did sound like a cow, like, like a bellowing. What is that? Mm. I'm so freaked out that I was doing that all night. I didn't do it I all night. Know. But I did it for a while. Literally slept next to you so many times, though, and I've never heard that. But then again, I also sleep like a rock. Yeah, and that's what I was wondering, because Blaze hasn't heard that before. But I guess he sleeps well, too. So maybe... 
So now I'm freaked out. Anyway, that's I, a weird sound. That doesn't even because I was thinking like maybe you burped and that was like the the exhale after, but like that's not it either. But it went on for a long time. <laughs> like, what is that noise? I don't I know. Freaked myself out this morning. I was like, I don't know if I like this app anymore. Um, if you happen to be someone um, in that works in sleep disorders, please uh, I- explain for us. Thank yeah, because <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm just like doing a weird like snore sound i mean I, I don't know so now i feel like i need to make another doctor's appointment anyway <laughs> it's fine it's all fine i i would definitely record yourself a second time and see if it's a recurring situation okay good idea good idea i mean I'm, i feel bad my baby used to sleep in that room she's gonna grow up like traumatized by these sounds she's just gonna you're gonna realize one day like when you visit a farm she does her best sleeping next to the cows <laughs> She falls asleep in a pasture. I'm like, what? <laughs> What's happening? She feels safe there. She's That's like, all. this is my new mom. I'm like, wait, 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 no. <laughs> no. Interestingly, you sound like a cow. And my other friend, uh, my other, uh, my childhood best friend, Deirdre, she sounds like a bear when she sleeps. Oh, sounds like we could start a whole circus. Like a, whole, a little zoo. Not a circus. I guess cows aren't part of that. But like a zoo. Yeah. <laughs> a little sleep zoo. A That'd farm. be fun. Yeah. If anyone out there sounds like a chicken or some piggies when you're sleeping, come I on down. I think chickens also aren't really in the zoo either. But um, oh, right. monkeys? monkeys. Yeah. Oh, all right. Oh, that's what you sound like. <laughs> oh my god, I was just popping a wine bottle in my head all night. <laughs> you literally sound like you're manifesting wine that being uncorked. That would explain uncorked. all the corks next to my bed. No, I'm just kidding. Uh-huh, there and all is. the yeah, empty yeah. wine bottles. So, But I do have this 19 <laughs> crimes. Um, Blaze was cooking some dinner that required white wine. And, oh no! Uh, it, I know it was it was really tough to add to the grocery list. Um, but so he got this 19 crimes Martha's because you know Snoop does the mm-hmm. the uh, red wine. So here's a Martha's Chardonnay. Um, I love so. their duo. It's I just lo- the best. Their dynamic is so lovely. It's they, it's like there's a documentary or not a documentary. I think it's a TV series where it's like called. Um, um, unexpected friendships or something. Oh. And it's it's like a, a Nat Geo series. Yeah, it's like I think. ducklings and puppies and stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. like random animals that you wouldn't expect to it's get along. It's a cow and a bear. Yeah. sleeping in the pasture. <laughs> it's Deirdre and Christine in the season finale. <laughs> uh, but no, I think I like to think of Snoop Dogg and Martha. As it's a great the, friendship. The narrators of that show. Um, anyway, so I'm popping my wine, and that's why Mom drinks. Our lovely friend Jess got me this glass, so I'm ready to go. Um, I am sorry I took up so much time with my medical musings, but here we are. No, you're good. Also, I will say another reason you drink, which I'll show you. Someone's getting a new home soon. Huh? <gasps> is that I can't, is that lemon? It's oh, well, lemon isn't oh, in there. It's the new case. His new home got oh, here it today. Looks swanky, M. I'm just saying, someone's about to move in. Bigger pastures, greater it looks pastures. Swanky, look at um, him! Oh my god, it gosh. is. It's bigger, so he can roll around in there and have a good time. I love that for him. And Upgrade. one thing, all because you didn't ask me why I drink. Interesting. Oh, right. Hey, why do you drink? <laughs> um. Okay. Well, I'll send you a picture Line. because I. F- <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I'm sending you the picture. Um, because I treated myself to a lot of things on Etsy for my birthday, and one of them just came in today, and it's this little fella. Oh my god! Wait, is this a tea kettle with a lava lamp on it? Okay, <laughs> You're... what's happening? Okay, it is a lava lamp, which I already own. I already own a few, so like there, there's no need to have another. But here we are. I definitely um, bought you one once. I remember. Yeah, I it's fine. And it I'm was like okay. your fifteenth one, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. That's I once we hit a hundred, it gets nerve wracking. I got think. it. But this one, uh, it's close. It looks like a tea kettle. Actually, I hadn't picked up on that. But someone, it, this was on Etsy, and it was like a one of a kind. And it is a my favorite color version lava lamp. By the yeah. way, where it's the blue liquid and the green lava. Uh-huh. It's my favorite. And uh, it was, it's made out of a 1960s cocktail make, mixer or something. Oh, oh, I see it. So it's like a shaker, but it has the spout mm-hmm. and a handle. Isn't that fun? Um, I mean, I just saw it and I was genius. like, I need to have it. Also, the handle isn't doing it justice, but usually glows this really pretty red. It's like a resin Whoa. situation. So anyway, that's that why I drink. Very, that is something you would invent in your dreams and then 
I saw Look it at- when I was slap happy and I was like, this feels good. <laughs> this and- is the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and so I drink in a good way because it has shown up, but I drink in a bad way because I can't be at my home right now because there's no internet. So I just dun, know dun, dun. it exists. I know it exists and I can't wait to finally crack into it, much like oh this gosh. story we're going to get into. Yay! See that shameless, seamless, endless. Yeah, I let it. I let it, se- segu. I let go to make sure that the segue worked, but then you just kept talking about the segue. So now we need another one. You know. I feel like this is going to be a perfectly chaotic episode. How okay. are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> um, here is my story, and uh, how do I want to start this? Well. I'll start it this way. This is a, I'm finally stepping away from the phantoms for a second because I know I've been saying I was on a ghost phase, having my little phase, yep. a phantom phase. A phantom phase. We got there. We got there. Um, But now we're bringing it back to something Christine loves, maybe a little more. Do you know what that is? Is it aliens? It's a widow alien. I've been on an alien binge listening to podcasts. Oh. So I am like in the headspace. Oh my god! Okay, spooky, ooky. Okay, <gasps> good, 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 good. So maybe that's the sound coming out of you. Maybe they're channeling oh, you. Oh no! At night. Okay, that's also why it was so scary. Is because I've been like binge listening to these like podcasts about alien abductions, and then I woke up and heard that noise, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> Sounds like a like a beacon or something. Like they left something in oh, no. your little belly, <laughs> like a homing beacon. <laughs> like I'm right here. <laughs> oh. Okay, so here is uh, the story of the, I, I want to pronounce it right. I think it's Maringa Abduction, okay, a- a.k.a. the Agripo Experiment, <gasps> a.k.a. the Jardim Alvadora Affair. I've never heard of this. Me either. And it was actually pretty hard to find. I think usually I use like, I don't know, a million sources uh, per story. But this one, I think I only used four. Wow. Um, So it was not easy to find. I only found one podcast on it. It was like, it's, I'm unsure why it's not mentioned a lot. But um, it also might, I don't know yet, but it might lead into a part two. Um, Not because the story is particularly long, but I will explain later that at the end, at the same time this was happening, apparently another UFO story might have been going on. And if oh. I can find enough information on it, I'll piggyback them and do the next one next cool. week. Cool. So uh, this is the Ma- Maringa abduction. And this happened April 13th, 1979 in Maringa. I really hope I'm saying that right. It's a, it's a city in Brazil. Um, and it, the main characters today are 21-year-old Rosalito de Matos and 13 year old Roberto Carlos. Okay. So Rosalino and Roberto are brothers. Okay. One's 21, one's 13. And so it's 1979 and it happens to be Good Friday. So they are going to visit their sister and their sister lives in the suburb of how I think it's pronounced Jardim Alvadora, um, which is why it's called the Jardim Alvadora Fair. Okay. So she lives in the suburb. They're going to go visit her for Good Friday, and they're going to go watch a Good Friday, I think, Christian program on TV. The Passion of the Christ? It just might be. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's what happened that day. Good to that's... know. I would have just, uh, I would have probably tr- put something else on television. You know, as a, but... as, a, as a small child, I was always like, why is this such a Good Friday? Right? They nailed him to a cross today. Why is, what's, what I was are we like, doing? I feel like if there's a good Friday, there ought to be a bad Friday. But I guess bad Friday is Friday the 13th. But what I if... feel like this is the bad Friday, right? Like, we nailed we... him to a cross. That's not pretty pretty good in my mind, but whatever. Fair enough. And also some people would say Friday the 13th is lucky. And conveniently, this uh, good Friday was on a Friday the 13th. No. Silly, silly facts. I have double, them all. Double, double trouble. So unfortunately, they... I guess got sleepy or the program was like supposed to start at midnight or something. I don't understand if they didn't know like the TV schedule or like they planned on staying overnight and just left. I don't know what the deal is, but um, I saw from one source that the program was not going to really start until midnight or 
something like that. So they headed out early and they left around 1130 at night, mm-hmm. which in my mind, you were all, you only had a half an hour left to wait around, you know, you could have. Yeah, but then you got to commit to the whole thing. I know. I know. It's just like those people that like go to, they go to a New Year's party, but then don't stay for the new, like the midnight ringing in. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You, you better bring the fun. You know what I mean? Not the, not the snoozing, not the not Z's. The snooze fest. So they're, they decide to leave around 1130. And while they're walking home, uh, Roberto, the younger one, he points to a star in the sky and he mentions how weirdly bright the star is. Mm-hmm. And I get to a point where he's kind of freaking out about it. And Joselina says, don't worry, it's just a star, no big deal. But soon they realize that this light is following them. Oh, shit. And, I mean, we're going right into it right off the bat. And, by the way, this is a fairly short story, so every bit of it is pretty um, yeah. jam-packed with info. I'm already scared. Good. That's what I want out of this <laughs> You sounded a little too excited about that. <laughs> Our, at least once a week, I always get to talk to you, and I want you to just feel fear every time. What do you just think? Just utter terror at your hands. <laughs> yeah, you know it. <laughs> so, all of a sudden, they realize that the star is following them. And they're calling it a star, but I think we all know what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, as soon as the star begins to follow them and they're aware of it, Joselino's heart begins racing. Been there, Joselino. And <laughs> go <laughs> and upside down. Go upside down. Just lie on a bed. You're going to be fine. Some staircases. Go, go to my doctor. He's, he's in Sherman Oaks. You're going to have a good time. <laughs> Sherman Oaks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just a, just a skip away from Brazil. Yeah, it's a suburb or something. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, his heart began racing and he had uh, eerie chills throughout his entire body. And apparently these chills, he said, like, these were not good chills. Oh, no. Um, before they knew it, they were not in control of their bodies anymore. <gasps> and it was like their mind could see what was happening, but their, their bodies were not theirs. Oh no. And their legs began walking toward an open field. No. And this is a quote from Hosolino. Suddenly we started to walk and walk and walk. It seems as, as if we were walking very slowly and then we were walking very fast we fought against it, but couldn't. We continued walking. It seemed that it was impossible for us to think of anything else, and the only objective was to reach the place where the star was. Oh, my God. Forget about it. Forget about it. So they walk into this field, and they get to the closest part they can get to uh, where, they're, where they're as close as possible to the star, and it's a tree in the middle of this field. And the star is, like, pretty darn next to them in this tree. Like, not in the sky anymore. Like, just kind of floating above them, near them. Uh Uh-oh. And so they get to this tree. Their bodies collapse. (gasps) And the star is floating right next to them. And before passing out, Joselino, in a dreamy, uh, slippery conscious state, he hears the some voice in his mind say, The job is not ended. We will be back. Ugh. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Next thing they knew, they wake up and time has passed. The worst, the worst of the worst experience, I think. Uh, they just wake up and they're incredibly groggy. Like, jeez, oh, almost as if like I what I imagine is like heavily hangover. like hung hungover or drugged up on something like. Just stumbling and groggy and just kind of their bodies. I've heard not people totally almost have working. like flu like symptoms sometimes after an abduction. I don't know about that, but I would believe it. The, like the, body aches and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I would, I don't, they didn't say anything that particular, but the way that it was described sounds a lot like, like a flu like situation. Right. Um. So they, because their body, they were just so groggy. Apparently, they couldn't even, like, they were so weak, they couldn't even get up. Um, they had to help each other get up from the ground. And then they had to hold each other while they, like, stumbled home. <gasps> oh, no. So, like, their body is not 10 out of 10 right now. No. Um, On their way home, they also were very dirty for no reason. Um, mm. Maybe the reason was that they were walking through a field or something. But they're apparently muddy. Um, And they woke up feeling like hungrier than they ever had in, in the entire in their entire lives just like okay. so insatiably hungry one of the so the podcast i've been listening to astonishing legends and they talk about um uh 
Terry Lovelace's abduction and he is telling the story and he says when he woke up from his abduction, he was thirstier than he had ever experienced in his entire mm-hmm. life. And it was like I, insatiable thirst. And I wonder if that's like, I don't know, because the missing time for us only feels like a couple hours. But for all we know, like in another world, sure, missing time oh, interesting, is like then. maybe you were there for like five goddamn months and you never had an ounce of water. I don't know. And time just doesn't. Yeah, that's an interesting thought, too. I don't know. Or maybe whatever is happening to you during that abduction, you're just so depleted of energy. that Right. You... Or that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Always fun to to wonder and only wonder. I and certainly only hope... wonder. And I never certainly find hope out. I, I never want the answer. <laughs> I don't want to find out. <laughs> um, so they are just like stumbling back. Uh, their legs are their knees are super weak and they finally make it home. And basically, the second they get to the front door, they collapse and they collapse onto the door and like break it open <laughs> with their bodies because they so just they splat can't even, down. Like, get in oh wow yeah. um so their family helps them inside and while Joselino and roberto were being calmed down they were trying to like tell their story and they look out into the field and the star is still there what no go away <laughs> the brothers point to it and start trying to explain what happened and once they start talking about it uh, I guess the star heard them or something. Christine's worst nightmare that they can hear you uh-uh. no matter how far away you are. Uh-uh. And this is a quote from Joselino as they're trying to tell their parents what happened or their mom and their brothers what happened. The object seemed to observe us from that distance. And suddenly my brother and I received some kind of shock so strong that it hurled us to the ground. My mother, another brother and my sister were not touched. My mother told me later that when they touched me or Roberto, we felt electrified, but we (gasps) couldn't move a finger. Oh, my God. So they're still controlling you. Yeah. So basically, from a far distance, they were able to hear them talking about what happened and essentially remote tased them. Like punish them for it. (gasps) Yeah. That's scary. Um, And then if you if they like implanted something. I don't know. Because they end up talking about this later, and I don't hear any more about this, like, tasing feeling. Oh, okay. So I wonder if maybe this was just while that star was still, like, like earthbound. in proximity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, within a certain range of each other, they could still witness each other. if it was, like, a lifetime thing where you never knew if it was going to zap you. Oh, my God. But talk about, like, keeping it quiet. That's true. That's true. But I – but, yeah, because it's interesting. The only time that – he had this experience was also the same time where he could still see the star in the field. So maybe they could, they both could recognize each other. And that was, that's interesting. But then as soon as it flies away, he's able to talk about it later. So, okay. Um, but yeah, so they basically got like shocked into the ground so they wouldn't talk again. Uh, and it flies away. The star flies away, Mm. never to be seen again. And the brothers could move again. As soon as the, the star flew away, they could just get back up and walk around wow. and didn't have to recover any longer. Wow. So I also wonder if, like, all of a sudden they could get up, like, I don't know if they were still really weak or anything, but it's almost like, well, that thing was on Earth. It was almost maybe harnessing their energy to be oh, there. And then as soon as it was gone, they could just, like, pop up and be fine. Like disconnected. I, yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. I hadn't thought of that. So, although the brothers tried to move on, uh, they knew that they didn't have the whole story of that night. And there's some sources I saw, I think like two of them, said that these brothers were eventually interviewed by the Center for Flying Saucer Research, which, one, I would like to join it. Mm -hmm. And two, I couldn't find, like... I found uh, a, like some excerpts of their conversation, but I don't know if that was directly with the Center for Flying. No, that wasn't. It wasn't because, okay, like you can help me solve this mystery. So I saw a few sources say that they were interviewed by this CFSR. Mm-hmm. But then they end up agreeing to later do like a hypnosis regression situation. Okay. And the excerpts I got were from that hypnosis session. But oh. I didn't see any sources that actually like gave files or reports or records on their interviews with Maybe this flying research thing. Sealed? 
Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. But I was just like, why would you even announce that they got interviewed by them? And then like, I couldn't find anything. Show the interview. Yeah, that's weird. So anyway, so anyway, all we have are conversations from the hypnosis regression. Um, and Ho- Hosolino decides to go through hypnosis and he does this with uh, Dr. Oswaldo Alves. Okay. And while under hypnosis, Hosolino begins to remember that night in the field. And he says... As we recall, they could, they were all of a sudden out of control of their bodies, walking into the field. They get to the tree and they pass out. Mm-hmm. And they were on the ground for only – this is now while hypnotized. He's remembering they actually only were on the ground for a few minutes, um, or at least he was, and all of a sudden his body begins floating. Oh, no. And his body heads towards this star or this object that had a door in the side of it. <gasps> And in the doorway, or at the doorway, there were two men, and they were humanoid. They were they looked like just two white men in their forties. Um, it apparently they did not seem really well, definitely out of place because they were on a fucking UFO. But like <laughs> they, they didn't seem like anyone other than humans, as they were described. Right. One of them though grabs Hosolino's arm and holds a foreign object against it for a moment. And so I don't know if that was like scanning him into the building or something. Oh. I I don't know. But so he put something next to his arm for a second. And then um, the two men like make a, make a gesture that implies like come inside with us. Whoa. And I, at this point, I don't know for the rest of the story if like at least at this point, I don't know if he walked in because he could or if he was still like out of his body and they were controlling him. Right. Because if they're like, come on in. And he's like, I don't have a choice. Like, what's yeah. the point of gesturing? But OK. Exactly. Or if they're like, come on in. It, like, what do you do? Can you say no? Can you like, run? <laughs> right. Can you go? Actually, can you put me down? I really am not interested. Like, actually, can you set me back down? It's like, I'm like, it's already midnight. I was planning on going home to sleep. But I had to watch The Passion of the Christ. Right. At, at midnight. <laughs> I have somewhere to be. Also, I I don't know if there's I just think it's ironic that this is happening on a Friday the 13th because it feels spooky, but also interesting that it, this happened on a good Friday because I feel yeah. like, I don't know. I don't know what I think about it. I just find it as a funny parallel. It, it is an interesting uh, coincidence. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm i like 99% sure it means nothing symbolically that it had landed on the stage. It's just, oh, what are the odds? Well, it's a weird, yeah, it's, it is a weird coincidence, I think. I don't know, just a silly fact, I guess. But um, so they end up going inside and the two men lead Hosolino through many rooms uh through four different rooms and i don't know why they brought him to different rooms i don't know if they were like oh not this room let's go to the next one but uh it seemed like maybe he was getting like a little bit of a tour a tour and so the first room he sees uh a bunch of machines and monitors kind of like a computer lab i guess mm-hmm. In the second room, he sees several motors, but he mentions that the motors were weirdly silent when in use and they weren't hot to the touch when in use. So it's a little bit like an advanced technology, I guess. In the third room, Hosolino sees a bunch of, the best word he could come up with were like photographs on the walls. And it seemed like the photographs had a bunch of scenes of nature. So it felt almost like you just went to someone who likes landscape photography and just was looking at his wall. That is so weird. But the fourth room, he sees medical equipment. Nope. And they basically tell him to lie down Mm. so they can examine him, which apparently they did. And uh, I don't know how this happened, but they... Also got a sperm sample. Okay. Next, they put what looks like a helmet on his head. And uh, once they put the helmet on his head, I guess like it was something to read his mind or read signatures that were going on in his body, chemical signatures. I don't understand. I don't totally understand. But they put a helmet on his head. And then the two men walk out and leave him in the room. And soon a humanoid woman walks in Mm. and she is described as six or sorry, she's described as five, six to five, nine, which apparently is 1.7 to 1.8 meters. Yeah. Um, She had black hair that came to her shoulders and she wore a black coverall. She had light brown skin. She had full like thick black eyebrows. 
She had black eyes. Okay. And other than that, she looked very similar to humans. Interesting. <sighs> trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning for SA. Okay. If you would like to skip ahead, this is your moment. I would say maybe two minutes ahead if you would like to do that for yourself. Okay. And we'll, we'll say like, okay, that section is over. Mm -hmm. Um, so Hoselino sitting there on the table, this woman comes in and she begins touching him all over his body in a very, I don't know if sensual is the right word. Sexual it was maybe. Sexual. Yeah. It was apparently in a way that was meant to arouse it, it, him arouse him and if and it wasn't uh, aggressive and he never said anything about feeling like he was obligated but uh, but like at, but he's already such, been dragged onto this ship against his will and so. he's already been get, yes and it's this is such a, a tricky uh, such a tricky part because he was the way that he described it it felt like they're like he i don't know it felt very like a neutral experience by the way he was describing it. But I'm going to just go ahead and say it's full blown essay anyway, because I'm imagining, yeah. I'm assuming he never gave consent. I'm assuming she wasn't like, hey, I know that we just put this helmet on your head without consent and also strapped you down without consent, but can I do and this? And also got already got a sperm sample before oh, yeah, this true. happened. True. So like, I don't understand. Well, what yeah, wait. Okay. I don't even know how the first sample got taken. I don't care to know personally um and it wasn't in any if he didn't talk about it yep yep bada bing bada boom okay um but yeah he was the way he described it was very neutral but then again he was under hypnosis it was a clinical space so sure sure i don't i don't know totally what's going on in his head but these are just uh what happened so she's touching him all over his body in a way that makes his body respond yeah um and then he gets on top of her but I also want to remind everybody that his uh, body was not hit, was not in his control a while ago. So I don't know if that's happening again True. or if yeah. this, I don't know if he's in control of his body or not at this point, but he gets on top of her. They do what you can assume happens until um, he has completed the task. Mm -hmm. If you know what I'm saying. Um, she then pushes him off and wipes him down with a cloth and, um, and then telepathically says, quote, perhaps the seed will grow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, and there's, by the way, excerpts online um, in pretty incredible detail uh, if you want to learn more about that. But it doesn't further along the story. So I'm just not going to bring it sure, to anyone's yeah. attention just because I don't know who's listening. And this might have already been a lot for some people. Um, but there are excerpts online for people who are interested in knowing more about the, th that event. Okay. So, so is that that's, it, that's it. That's, that's done. trigger, trigger warning over everybody. Okay, great. Um, so she doesn't give her name, but, uh, he does learn that there are apparently doctors and scientists studying humans mm -hmm. and they are part of a department called the Agripo unit. Okay. Which is why this is called the Agripo experiment. Right. Um, and I don't know what Agripo stands for or if it stands for anything or if that's a word in their world. But they're just doing research on humans. And I guess in a very direct uh, involved for way. real. You could call it that. Yeah. Research. Yeah. It's not just observing, which yeah. I would think is what research is. But okay. Yeah. Um, and then this is a quote from Hosolino. They told me they were for peace and that their objective was to study, to understand the earth. They spoke to me about life, the fights, and the wars. She said the life on earth was a life of neuroses, of conflicts, wars, hunger, and nobody is concerned for the upcoming effects. Mm. She said it was our selfishness that provoked the wars, hunger, and death. She said that they are our friends and they would like to cultivate a friendship with us and they are judging us. I really think they were for peace, that they were peaceful people and friends. Wow. Which again makes what I said earlier a little tricky because he seems to like, he's like, I think they're friends. And he's I- He's like, no, they were great. We, we got yeah, along so great. It's also that I don't, it's, I don't, I don't totally understand it, but if you would like to read the excerpts for yourself, go for it. Sure. Um, 
So Hosolino then asks them where they came from, and they respond, much beyond the stars. Wow. Which is, I would be like, that's too vague for me. Yeah, what the hell does that mean? (laughs) Much beyond. So one uh, source that I read claims that uh, the beings said to him that they were from a planet called Tortum, which is uh, in the Sado system of Andromeda. Oh, so sure, that's, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So I feel like that really did happen, where someone said, much beyond the stars, and then he went, please clarify. Yeah, and they yeah, were like, it's a very specific. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, okay, we're from P- Tordum. We're from if Tordum. you must know. So after this, the men come back into the room, and they say, we think it's time to leave you. Good. Yeah. So they walk Hosolino back to the door, and as he left, uh, he felt unable to move again. Oh. And this was kind of a weird, I I think I was reading it right, Um, but it sounds like he almost like jumped out of the star. Uh But I don't, again, I don't know if it was his body that he's in control of or if that was something that they caused him to do. But I guess the two men that were escorting him all all of a sudden started to float and they floated down to be able to catch him. Like as if this was part of the plan. Like, oh, you jump out and we're going to grab you and then we're going to have you float down the rest of the way. Yeah. And... So the so they he jumps out, they catch him, they bring him back to the part of the ground where he had collapsed next to his brother, and that's when he wakes up. Mm. Which is interesting because they're saying it's time to leave you. They're having a pretty, I would say, closed door experience. Like he's yeah. definitely like don't have to worry about them still being around. But if you recall, as he was either passing out or waking up at the beginning, he heard the phrase, the job is not ended, we oh, will be yeah. back. So I don't know if that meant it's time to leave you right now, but we will be back for additional research or I don't know. Ooh. And then that would, can you imagine the paranoia for the rest no. of your life? Like I can't eat. That's just. And that too... happens to a lot of people who experience this because it's like a, it's yeah. often a repeat process and like throughout your whole childhood and then into adulthood, it's like every couple of years you get a visit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And you can just, you never know if you're safe. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, he wakes up and uh, then, you know, he barrel uh, barrels onto his mom's house and then they see the thing in the sky. And when they're talking about it, they get shocked. Um, so keep in mind, this all happened. The whole story I just told you just happened to Hosolino and yeah. he didn't he didn't know the whole time where his brother was. Right. But one source did say that through hypnosis, you end up finding out that the brother was also on the ship. And I really hope he didn't have the same experience, especially because Roberto was 13. 13. Yeah. Um, so we don't know Roberto's side to this, but um, he was allegedly also on board, maybe in a different room. Hopefully he just stayed in the room with like the landscape pictures the landscapes. or something. <laughs> Let's just keep it at that. Um, interestingly, this same night, uh, even though they were the two that ended up on board and they didn't see anyone beyond these three beings... Um, there were other people on earth who in the, in the, uh, in the suburb or at least in the city that all claim to have seen a UFO and some people even got pictures of it. <gasps> so that's, it's interesting that there are corroborating reports on that's that. That's nice validation probably for them. I would, I, it would make me so happy to be like, okay, at least I don't Thank feel God. totally alone. Yeah. Um, and also the brother was... Uh, all, well, I already said this. The brothers were said to be interviewed by the Center for Flying Saucer mm-hmm. Research. Um, and one source said that Joselino and Roberto's mother was actually also a UFO abductee when she was a child. Okay. That's the other thing I'm learning is that oftentimes it runs in families. Yeah. So, um, so now you have siblings and the mother. Which also freaks me out because if I heard we'll be back, it's like you're going to be back even for my like goddamn kid because like this is like a long Or your kid's already on that ship. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like think about like the longitudinal study of like like experiencing or abducting one person, then they have a kid. And then you have children. Yeah. That's so scary. Yeah. That's so scary. So Joselino and Roberto understandably stepped away from the public with this case and like never talked about it. One, I can't imagine the press like 
keeping you from trying to get back to a normal life yeah to the shame of people not believing you and getting gassed all the time yep uh three not wanting to talk about your sexual assault Trauma, history right um uh, yeah and also like hello number four they got shocked the last time they talked about True. it so why would you even want to risk that good point yeah but i guess they talked about it during hypnosis and it was fine but i don't i don't know um how else how often they talked about it elsewhere uh but they did end up the case got mentioned in a few books so there are books on this and i guess fun fact that i have is this event happened either on or very closely near the same time as a separate ufo event called the mirasol contact which is hopefully what i'll be covering next week <gasps> Okay, is, so I see the double the double parter here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if there's enough info on it, I will be covering that next week. But um, that is the story of the Moringa abduction slash the Agripo experiment slash the Jardim Alvadora affair. You have no idea how timely that was because I've spent probably the last 48 hours just constantly thinking about aliens. Oh, it's, well, it sounds like that was pretty perfect timing. And I'm sorry for I, – I feel like I really um, – didn't know how to handle the trigger warning situation just because no, I, I, nev I never I never mean, have to give them. That's I, so. Yeah, no, I mean, it, I think it's smart to give them when they happen in your story, because I think a lot of times. Like, no one's I expecting don't, it. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't do them because it's one of those things where it, the stories just would need 400 each yeah. and it would get out of hand also then it's comparing it's like well which stories are worth the Deserves trigger warning or which exactly yeah, it becomes really weird but yeah i think usually people are expecting like a silly ghost story with mine yeah like, yeah no i think that was really smart to do so, um anyway was really smart sorry if i i really hope i wasn't um i think you did a good job there. with it i think you handled it perfectly okay cool well thank you so there's that and hopefully wow. next week i come back with another spooky story or i gotta spooky say UFO story. this stuff is fascinating to me do you know if the brothers like stayed close because one thing i keep hearing is that when people experience this together a lot of times they end up going separate ways they lose their relationship oftentimes never want to speak again i don't know about the two of them but i have heard that too where but i think that's kind of common with a lot of really intense with trauma trauma it's in like, general it's like yeah. i can't look at you without feeling without, without remembering i don't want to remember yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah so i think it might be hand in hand with that so that is so crazy thank you em for telling that mm -hmm. that was fascinating mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and terrifying also well thank you i uh, it was nice to find something that didn't have too many sources because I was like, oh, maybe that means like a lot of people aren't covering it. So, yeah, I mean, I've never I mean, not that I know that many, but I've never heard of it. So I feel like I heard about it before. Honestly, I think because I went I went to check our episode list to see if I'd covered it because I was like, I know I've heard this before. But then I started reading the notes and I was like, I think I got scared away from the essay aspect mm. last time. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why I haven't covered it. But which is like not that uncommon in these abduction stories either. I know. So it's amazing how many UFO cases I have covered though that don't involve the stereotypical probing situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I felt like I was on a good run there and then all of a sudden it got to an uncomfy place in this story. And I was yeah. like, Ooh, well. Anyway, oh, so I, I I hope, you know, for someone who's on an alien kick right now, I hope that got you extra kicky. You really did. And I feel like I'm going to have to record my sleep tonight and see if I make any more of those homing noises, <laughs> homing pigeon noises. That's, I think, what uh, people should start doing if they're feeling being like they're being watched. Just does your belly rumble in a weird way at night? Just <laughs> I wish it were my baby. belly. That's the thing is like it was right by my head. So I really don't think it was. I think it just came out of my mouth. mouth. <laughs> I'm like, I wish Maybe it were my like intestines. That would explain it, it. It felt like a fr like when the frog throat does uh, the... Yes. Yes. Like Maybe your toad. throat has a weird bar trick. Ooh, that'd be fun. I wish I could do that. Like, <laughs> I'll practice. Well, you'll practice when you're sleeping. That's for sure. <laughs> Apparently, I've been practicing. Okay. <laughs> okay. So speaking of being like... Uh, scared away from stories I have uh, a confession which is that I've been trying to get the guts to cover the Girl Scout murders for weeks now and I Whoa. was gonna do it today and then I ran out of time to like really go back through the like the notes are all done so the notes mm -hmm. are there and it's a two-parter and I just haven't been in the right 
headspace to do it and um what's i i don't know anything about it except that you are hesitant about doing it so it's got to be rough it's really it's really rough and like i know morbid has covered it a lot of podcasts have covered it um and done a good job on it as far as i know but i kind of have probably either blacked those out or not listened to those episodes so i don't even know but the notes that I have are really rough. It's a two-parter, um, and I, I would like to cover it because I think it's a story that deserves to be covered, um, but I just have not been in the right headspace, and I don't think it's fair to put that on the listeners when I'm not in the right headspace, so I'm going to wait to sure. do that. I was going to do it today, then I chickened out, and uh, I think I might do it uh, our next episode, so Ooh. I want to well, warn that, this you. Is, <laughs> this is the first time that we will know each other's stories beforehand no because oh both of us yeah that's true because the the one time i've done this is for uh that episode was it 18 it was um it was was sylvia likens sylvia likens it was so long ago but i remember saying the similar sentiment of like i'm too scared to cover it and people were like go for it because it was the darkest story i think one of the darkest stories i think that one and israel keys are the only ones you've told me in advance you were like this is (laughs) fucking brutal Yeah. yeah 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 And uh, Sylvia Likens was the first kind of child-related one. And so I think um, that was one I told you in advance. But yeah, you're right. If we both do these next week, it's the first time we're really like in the know about both of We're giving cases. people a, a little spoiler this That's week. That's fun. Um, so I, I plan to do it next week when I have a few more days to just really like process it and go through it again and make sure the notes are good. Um, so that is a warning to you all, but I will bring that up if, if I cover it next week, I'll, I'll bring that up then. But so instead I panicked and I just pulled out notes, (laughs) but instead I panicked should be a, like, I don't know, a tattoo at this point. (laughs) Oh, I'm going to tattoo it right here on my chest, but instead (laughs) comma, you know, those, you know, that saying like, uh, she, she said she what is it like she said she could so she did or something right right i'm gonna write <laughs> she, she said she could but she didn't and panicked instead and, <laughs> but instead comma she I panicked, panicked. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's like my that's like the mantra of the her scene shifter uh, it, you know what it really is i that was what the sce always said they heard growling and around in there in, in her throat so <laughs> <laughs> In her tummy and her throat. It's the weirdest yeah. thing. Yeah, I remember there was one thing um, I saved on Pinterest like 15 years ago. And it was like, don't limit, uh, don't just panic at the disco. Like, panic, panic everywhere. everywhere. Panic at the grocery store. Panic in bed at night. I'm like, oh, that that speaks to my soul. Okay, so um, a weird trail uh, of panic at the disco. I thought disco ball. I thought my gay bathroom. Your big gay bathroom. Yeah, I've been waiting for you to bring that up on the show. Have I not announced my gay bathroom on no, the show? No, you told me about it. Mm, that's not true. I thought I said it on my birthday episode where I was like, oh, these are the things I'm doing for my birthday. It's like buying myself a bunch of stuff. Did okay, I? maybe you did. Maybe you did. I think maybe it, I was talking about the troll hole. You There's were definitely so many things, talking about the troll hole. There are so many things I'm just like. There's a lot of weird nooks and crannies of your apartment. Bam, bam, bam. Call me Bobby or something, whoever from Queer Eye. Like just design, design, design. <laughs> um <laughs> I uh, no, I'm I, in case I haven't announced it, I'm building a gay bathroom. Um, and it's going very well. A disco ball is involved, which is why I, um, that's what I thought of. But so you panic I, in the gay bathroom, panic in the gay bathroom. <laughs> Wait a minute, someone make that a shirt. Um, so my, my goal is I want it to look like a trashy, like, I don't know, like campy bathroom that people want to like. Only gay people want to make out in. Love it. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I'm not going to allow anyone who's not queer to make out in there. But if you're queer and you need a place to make out, I will escort you to my personal bathroom. And it's going to, it's going to look very good. It's on its way. A lot of things got delivered uh, while I was gone and slowly coming together, folks. I'm very excited to show it to you. Lava lamps? Lava lamp is not a part of it. That was just a bonus for me. Love that. I mean, I, I figured think, the cocktail maker lava lamp wasn't, but I, I wondered if any of the other lava lamps were part of it. Actually, you know what? I literally was on, uh, I was online last night looking for little, little bathroom lava lamps. Yeah, so you were. Probably. Oh my gosh. I bet they have the nightlight ones. Like That's like what a, I was looking for. Like a Glade plug-in, but it's actually a lava lamp. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Ah! Um, but I will say one of my, so... I will say some of the things have been delivered, including um, a hand towel set that is theirs and hers. Beautiful. Right? 
uh, embroidered, obviously, obviously, theirs and hers. And then a towel came in today that is rubber duckies in BDSM leather. So <laughs> yeah, you told me about that. I'm very excited. <laughs> I don't about know it. if you've mentioned that on the show, but you definitely talked about that. I, I wanted to, to be. I wanted to be camp. I wanted to be drag. I wanted to be fabulous. So. I'm so excited for this bathroom, um, and I think I'm going to L.A. in July. Well, I know. I, I'm trying to get it all done before you get here. Okay, d- don't rush. Don't pressure yourself because I'll be back again in August, but uh, I'm very excited. Very excited. Good and, to know. Um, Maybe gotta- when you're here, by the way, uh, since I'm at the Ambassador Drink Department, can you get rid of all your fucking breast milk? Because it's like <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Stacks, just mountains of booby milk in I'm the fridge glad it's right now. Still there, and I will take it with me. Would you, would your baby be able to eat it anymore? Yes. Is she, oh, okay. Well, hey, that works out. I thought it was going to have to get. I was trash so afraid all-led. you threw it away, and I was no. going to feel really sad. I am not ever going to be responsible for what you do with your boobs, whether it is currently in your boobs or now out of your boobs. That I is know, all you. but you you have sometimes the smarter uh, instinct when it comes to my belongings that need to be thrown away. Not necessarily this, but like there are Talk times about a where... belonging. It's the one belonging of yours I think I have no say in. Okay, so, okay. Um, I appreciate that. It's just hanging out here. Me and all your breast milk are just having a good time <laughs> waiting for my internet to kick in. <laughs> You probably would have like the wrath of all the uh, breast milk producing and that's why we drink <laughs> listeners on your hands if you did throw it away. So I would not. That is uh, probably liquid gold as far as I'm concerned. That's right. That's right. And you made it. So I sure art, did. Art as far as I'm concerned. Talk about arts and crafts, you know? Yeah. Just you just made liquid gold. That's that's no that's no ordinary paper mache situation. Thank you. you know? It's no ordinary feat. I made xenon. And I made fucking breast milk. And what else do you want from me, world? W-O-M-A-N. That's what I got to say. <laughs> oh, find me in the gay bathroom, okay? <laughs> Thank you. If you're in there with a queer person, you are more than welcome in that gay bathroom as long as you need it. Okay. Go for it. Um, can I ask to, what was I going to say? Oh, I was hmm. probably just going to ask to go in your gay bathroom. That's probably all I was going to ask. Honestly, um, I'm a queer person. We can go in there. We don't have to make out, but oh, we can definitely stand no. in there together. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, you're right. Your bathroom, your rules, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not saying I want to. I'm just saying I don't want to be rejected in my own gay bathroom. You no, know I, would I would never. I would never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll probably be too busy pulling my breast milk out of your freezer, so. That would. You know what? Bring the breast milk. Let's see how crazy we get in this. Ooh, put it in the lava lamp. See what happens. Mm. Let's put it in one of those, um, uh, like the like the beer bottles meant for babies, and then have Leona get <laughs> fucked up in the gay bathroom. <laughs> okay, that's well, how we're gonna solve this. Eva and Rachel sent her a onesie that says, um, "My first pride," and she's been wearing that the last couple of days. And I've seen. it is, and of course, I put her in her jean shorts. The combo. Christine. No, I know. I know. I know. No, I know. Um, I don't think you know though, because what I'm gonna say is that I literally just bought (gasps) Leona a one. It's the same one. I already know which one it is. It's one from Target. (laughs) Oh no! Well, she's got two. Wait, Uh, what size is that one? Probably not big enough. Uh, Well, I don't know, but I did get her something else that's a bigger size. So, but I don't know (gasps) if it's a pride one. Sorry, Eva beat you to it. Ah, oh, damn it, Eva. That's okay. I'm sorry. It's, your baby can have more than one pride thing as far. That's fine. No, the limit is one in this household. I'm just kidding. I'll keep it here so she has a costume change in the gay bathroom. Honestly, that can be her gay bathroom outfit. I know what it can be. Okay, I know what it cool. can be. Don't cool, you cool, worry. Cool, 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 cool. Wow, we really derailed. Um, tell really? me about this like really tragic right on, story. Right on track. Into. So this is what I did. Instead, comma, I panicked. Oh, and, right. That's where we were. Right. What I did was I found old notes that I've never covered on the show. Mm. And I did not have time to read them. So we're just. <laughs> <sighs> I'm so, you know, I don't think you understand the parallels that are happening here because I literally almost was when my Internet went out yeah. yesterday and I was like, I don't know what to do. I thought I'm just going to use old notes. And I was like, wouldn't it be funny if I just went into it and didn't read the notes? <laughs> so like, I literally almost did that today. I like that you thought that and then said. But no, I'm a professional. And I said, well, wouldn't it be funny? That yep. was my backup plan if for some reason the And That's Why Your Drink Apartment also didn't have internet. Then oh, I, I was see. I was going to be fucked. So I'd be like, well. Well, that's what I did. And, um, you know, I just roll with the punches. Um, 
I'm known for being, um, what's the right word? Uh, <laughs> what spont- are you going to say? Spontaneous to a detriment, uh, to a detrimental degree. And so I'm just going to wing-, wing it and um, we're going to read these notes together. That sounds great. And Isn't I do that- really, <laughs> it sounds great. And also your um, description of yourself, absolutely exactly on par. Oh, so. oh I'm so glad you agree. Because sometimes people are like, no, you're you're wrong about yourself. And they're usually right. It's one of my favorite things about you. It's and what's it's such a weird um because half the time it really is two personalities because half the time I don't th- I don't think I could pull you out of your house. But the no, other half never. the time, so goddamn spontaneous, it's to a detriment. I will but steal a boat in the right context. You know what I mean? In the right in <laughs> you gotta be in the right headspace. <laughs> and honestly, that's I only want to be around you during that headspace. Cause sometimes you're like, <laughs> let's just like stay at home and eat some cheese and play a board game. And I'm like, we got to steal this book. I though. will say like 90% of the time I'm that. And then 10% yeah. of the time. I'm like, well, when you, when you choose anything. to thrive, you fucking <laughs> deliver. I haven't nailed anything to the wall in a few days. We could do that. I could paint a room half, half as hardly and just cover some of the walls for fun that's fine it's fine you t- and i'm here for the ride the entire time yeah so i guess it does give gemini like the exact representation it deserves um so that's what we're gonna do this is the story of bell siddons aka madam vestal comma notorious southern bell of the old west oh hold on so since you said old west i'm trying to think of where you would have done this is it texas no it's st louis again which is literally the last story i covered from our book when i pulled the same fucking excuse of not having internet because my power went out that's so weird what is going on (laughs) is mercury in retrograde it's still gemini season maybe things are just working out for us i think it's gemini season mercury was retrograde for a while there i think um i'm also just you know my iron is low i'm gonna use that Uh, as an excuse for now that'll be it that's that's totally fine um so again a perk of my memory being as strong as like a goldfish um (laughs) i have never heard this story as far as i know hey me neither all right cool let's let's get into it as if it's a a brand new piece of information to both of us super Okay, so the first bullet I have here is a quote from a radio show from the 1950s called The Frontier Gentleman. And this is a quote about Belsons. It is a never-ending source of amazement to me what a woman will do for or to a man. (gasps) Okay, put that on the shirt also. I like that on a shirt. Except don't because I feel like it's sort of like, ugh, it's never... It'll always amaze me what women will do for men. Like, ew, I don't want that on a shirt. I don't know. Wait, hold on. Read the quote again then? It's a never-ending source of amazement to me what a woman will do for or to a man. Oh, I thought both of them it was to a man. (laughs) Yeah, I guess (laughs) to a man is more badass. But for a man, I'm like, on his behalf is kind of ick. I would like the second half or whatever. Get out, just edit that little part out. I don't want that. And then, and then write the frontier gentleman. Just write a new sentence, but make it really good. That's what I want. Instead, make it say, instead, comma, I panicked. (laughs) Okay, got it. Okay. Why? Um, What is happening with me today? I feel like I'm just like spiraling for no reason. I'm like on my third glass of wine. I haven't had anything to eat in a few hours. So I think I'm not (laughs) helping the cause, is what I'll say. (sighs) Uh, Okay. Okay, so Belle Siddons. She was born in Jefferson City, Missouri, sometime in the 1830s, and was born on a plantation. Mm-hmm. Her parents were wealthy landowners from St. Louis, and her uncle was actually Missouri governor at the time. Uh, his, Clay- his name was Claiborne Fox Jackson. Whoa. So Belle attended and graduated from the Missouri, get this, the Missouri Female Semin- Seminary. I almost said cemetery again, which I did last week. <laughs> seminary. <laughs> At Lexington, Missouri, and she spent a lot of her young life traveling with her uncle and meeting with people in the elite circles of Southern society, basically learning etiquette and how to be charming, how to oh. come across as you a can't Southern teach girl. charm, baby. So you just got to be born with it. You know, uh, I know all about that. <laughs> and so I don't need that school. <laughs> I got it built in charm school. I did always I would love to I would love to. I think that'll be my hyperfixation of the night to learn all all about the ins and outs of a charm school. You know, I had something like that um, growing up. Cotillion? 
Well, I did do cotillion. I hated it. I hated cotillion too. <sighs> Uh, but I also at school, um, we had this woman named Miss Manners hmm. and she would come in every couple of months and we'd have to take these like courses with her on like how to be a lady. And the earliest one I remember was second grade. And I'm like, ew, wait a minute. Seven. Did you say her name was Miss Manners? Her name she was, was literally Miss Manners. I've looked her up and she has like books that she's like, written. she's like, she's teaching you about manners and her name is Miss Manners. Yeah. But I think she like. That's either a pseudonym or she changed her name or something. But it sounds like like the like a like a, a Stepford wife mascot. Like yeah, like no, that's like teach. what she was. She like taught us what to do with like our silver, and I'm like, what the fuck, silver? What are you talking about? I feel like if you were teaching children, like you said, second grade, I feel like there should have been like a kitty cat and like some like. I don't know. No, there was just this housewife scary... dress, and she's known as Miss Manners, and she teaches you how to like. I don't know, be she a stereotype. Was a scary lady. And she was like, This is how you polish your silver. And I'm like, I eat my cereal out of a Winnie the Pooh bowl. I don't need you to tell me how to use silver. But I think a lot of that has stuck in my mind about like like I still know where the forks go and all that business. And I what a waste of my memory and my brain space, you know? Uh yeah. I hmm. I'm not where saying was my I child recently to private Catholic school, that's for sure. I was somewhere recently where I had just become friends with it was weird because I was talking to a group of people that I'm not actually that close with. We were all like new and it was like our first time hanging out. Where the fuck was it? But at, at some point we were all like, where do we stand on manners? Like, how are we how are we navigating the rest of this hangout? Like, Because I think food had gotten there and it was like, <laughs> are we are we doing like the Civil War thing or am I allowed to feel free to just like get really disgusting in front of everyone? So and I don't remember where I was, but I remember really appreciating that someone asked that. And then all of us were like, manners are not at this table certainly manners so. are for the dog manners are for miss manners only yeah i've anyway sorry miss manners her head probably exploded when i when she overheard that somewhere in the in the world oh that I, i'm sure it did if she were near our table when that happened she would have been like what <laughs> i swear she was like 95 when she did this for me in second grade so i don't know where she is now but uh i did also i did have to take these kind of um etiquette classes at school. And again, my parents were paying for this like this private school. It's just such a waste. Such a waste. I think uh, it ended at Cotillion for me and it, that was enough. Disturbing. Terrible. Mm -hmm. I know how to foxtrot though, folks. That's oh, I sure don't. Well, then you weren't paying attention to Cotillion. <laughs> Do you think I was paying attention? <laughs> Did you ever think I was paying attention? No. Oh. And by by knowing how to foxtrot, I mean, I know how to let a boy lead me in the foxtrot. Yeah. So. Big yikes. So it doesn't if we did it together, we'd both be like, what the fuck? Although you'd have to be the boy. I don't even know how this. to. I guess I could learn to be the boy because I don't know how to be the girl in it either. <sighs> okay. You can anyway. do the fox. What? Nothing. Let's just move on because uh, I was drinking water and also the joke did not land. <laughs> and said a joke and then sw <laughs> swung the water bottle back. And I was like, what'd you say? It just was such bad timing. <laughs> but also I kind of knew what I was doing. So I'm sorry. That's okay. Just know that I made it really, it was unnecessary. Un it was so stupid. Like not even fun. This no one would have had fun. I had fun. This is so stupid because we still have to record the after episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a, a long okay. day okay okay sorry so m there's miss manners or wait no there's not someone else is at charm school that's where we left off Bullet she's free. at charm school bell is at charm school and she's learning how to do proper etiquette how to be charming and apparently her debutante ball was the talk of the town mm -hmm. but then the civil war broke out dun 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 Dun, dun, dun. At this point, Bell was in her 20s. Missouri residents were divided between supporting the North and the South. But of course, Bell and her family were Southern sympathizers who actively sought to, quote, crush the Union's agenda. Wow. Great. Well, great. So Bell did what any young wo woman would do in her situation. She, get this, became a spy for the Confederacy. Well, the spy, the first half of that sentence is was cool. also very fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. And okay. then it quickly becomes not fun, but it's like cool. she's a spy that I hope was bad at her job and and was involved in the Confederacy losing. Yeah, that's, I know. It, that's it's sort hope. of like, oh, it would have been cool the other way around, but okay. Yeah, 
Yeah. Well, we can't, we can't win them all. Nope. So she began spending all her time with union soldiers who were training in the area. She would go to dinners, dance halls, and even the opera with these soldiers. Many of the men became enamored with her and wanted to impress her. So they started to share classified information about military plans and the position of soldiers with her, which she would then like directly pass on to the confederacy men are so dumb well and that's why that quote annoys me at the top like it's astounding what women will do for a man and it's like it's astounding that i get it no but i feel like it's astounding the other way around what men will do for a a woman oh 100 you're totally right they're giving up wartime secrets to take her to the opera yeah I don't know what this has to do. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, I, I thought the quote was like, no, you're right. Flipped you're right. upside down. You know what it should be then? We get a shirt with that quote and then we put an X through woman and put men. Like it's astounding what men would do. Like just, well, you just change it for them. Okay. And then everyone's like, what does that shirt mean? And we're like, we have no idea. And then we go, men are silly. That's it. Can't like the shirt a- just say men are silly? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, let's, let's do that. <laughs> It's just easier. That just gets let's, the point across. <laughs> can we just get, let's have a shirt and just say like men are silly geese. Like just have like a bunch of geese <laughs> with like, and then just have, and then write men and like point an arrow at we the, could at the silly We could recycle the goose cam shirt and just. Oh, <laughs> the silly, it would be a silly goose cam. Oh, it'd have to be a silly goose cam. Totally different thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So take, take, take goose cam. Yeah. Get the camera away from, from him. Take him, take it and, away. He has a name tag on. It says, hello, my name is Silly. And then you just write, and then you just write men somewhere on the shirt and point an arrow at the Silly Goose. That's, and that's so good. I know what it is. It's honestly genius. TM, 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 <laughs> Yeah, everyone wants to steal it. Eva, get the merch company on the horn, who they happen to all be men, but they'll get it. It's fine. Get it on the horn. Honk, honk. honk. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> they, okay. So she's getting these secrets from the opera. Okay. From these people at the opera. And in 1862, she was found out by General Newton Curtis from New York and an arrest warrant was issued. One of her admirers had tipped her off. So she tried to escape, but she was caught trying to flee the area. So first she uh, claimed innocence and said she had done nothing wrong. And then they opened up her little bag and inside they found detailed plans of the stops on the railroad line that was being used by the Union Army to transport supplies and weapons. So she had like full time military intel in her bag. (laughs) Smoking gun. Smoking gun. And that's when she changed her tune and began to brag about her role in helping the South win the Civil War. She then accused the North of making a war on women, which I'm like, hmm, hmm, wrong angle, but okay. Uh, And then she dramatically challenged them to shoot her like a common spy. Oh, my God. Wow. They did not. (laughs) Yeah. She's a lot of things, and bold is one of them. Bold is most of them, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Instead, she was tried for her crime, found guilty, and sentenced to a year at the Grand Street Rebel Prison. Can't believe oh. that's what it was called. But she proposed a deal, which the authorities accepted. And the deal was that she would be released after four months, but would be banned from Missouri until the war was over and would only be allowed to do hospital work until that time. Hmm. Okay. So she kept that promise and left the state to work as a wartime nurse. When the war ended, Bell returned to Jefferson City, Missouri, to work as a lobbyist for politicians, during which she became notorious for abil- for her ability to subtly influence certain members of the legislature. Oh. There's this newspaper article uh, that I found from 1881 that describes her time working in Jefferson City as full of, quote, scandalous stories, wine suppers, and mysterious excursions to St. Louis. <laughs> Oh, I love I, her. I I really I don't want to love her, but you know there I are know. parts of her I'm really admire. I not admire, but um, I do want to keep watching the show. You know, yeah, what I'm it's sort of yeah, it's like a train wreck. Uh, yeah, I don't. I definitely don't love most parts of her, but just some of the like descriptions of her, I'm like, damn, she's like a fun time. It's a firecracker. Yes, yeah. a dynamo. Let's call a her that. Dynamo, a real indeed. dynamo. Yeah. So suddenly she seemed to vanish in thin air. She had fallen in love with a man named Newt Hallett of Kansas City, who was described in the uh, article I just mentioned as a 
Young Sport. Oh. <laughs> uh, the two of them moved to Texas together. And because he was a gambling man, he taught her how to play cards. And lo and behold, we're not shocked. She was very good. She was naturally very good at playing cards. Uh, and she worked as a dealer of blackjack, or as they then called it, 21. And uh, I can see that because she learned how to be all charming and mm -hmm. manipulative. And she was probably just good at being the host of that kind of thing. Yeah. So unfortunately, a couple years later, Newt died of yellow fever and Belle was now forced to support herself. So she moved to Wichita, Kansas, changed her name to Madam Vestal, and she opened up her own gambling hall. Uh, because of her background, she was able to set up her gam gambling hall with luxurious style and refinement. And considering she herself was also beautiful and alluring, she became this kind of like legend in the area. She typically wore red or black velvet ornamented with gaudy jewelry, mostly diamonds and rubies. She had this like luxurious black hair that she like tossed over her shoulders and she would wear these gold and diamond clasps in her hair and she said this uh costume she wore this like outfit and she said that it excites curiosity and draws in suckers mm -hmm. <laughs> so i you know she's inspiring. i don't agree with a lot of her valuers but she does know how to con a man that's and what i'm saying right i can respect that part that's i can yeah. peel apart her personality and like in like that one spot that part i'm like okay okay i see you yeah she was soon running gambling enterprises in several cities when she heard of a gold strike in the black hills of south dakota so she straight up mm. moved to deadwood south dakota and set up shop there with her own combination bar dance hall and gambling establishment wait a minute deadwood I've covered a haunted place in Deadwood. Deadwood? I feel like I know Deadwood, too. I don't... We, it was years ago that I covered it, but I remember thinking, like, what a perfect name for a, a city that has a haunted house. It's a Deadwood. great name. Deadwood. Anyway, keep going. So she's she's just, like, already going to be, like, a girl bossing her way through girl Deadwood. Girl boss. <laughs> exactly. She moves to Deadwood, and she sets up shop with her own combination bar, dance hall, gambling establishment. Woo! She changed her name again, this time to... Lurleen. Oh. I feel like she could have workshopped that a little bit. L U R L I N. -E. Of all the names. Of all, of the, all na the names. Of all the names. Not like Anne, like Lurleen. All right. Yeah. Lurleen Monteverde. <laughs> it's quite. You know, I, my, the reason I say something like not Anne, I would imagine she wanted to like keep low in some way and like have like a name that was hard to. Not even a little bit. She really went for like, I'm just picking so many crazy sounds. She was I, like, like, I need a name that matches my diamond barrettes. Yeah. Like she's going to be able to get spotted real quick with a name Quickly. like that. I feel and like Lurleen that's was not what she should have been doing. <laughs> no, Lurleen, she wanted to be, All right. She wanted to be a star and she was uh, in the local newspaper. She was actually described as a quote, flawlessly groomed beauty, inviting, sultry and sensuous. Hmm. Okay. And then there was another article that called her a quote strange woman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that might have been us, I think. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> so so far I'm like, she is uh a silly another silly one. A so. silly goose. Uh <laughs> yeah, that's again that's why we drink newsletter. If you sign up for that, we might call her a strange woman. <laughs> she definitely is a, I mean, she's she's strange for picking a name like that. I she's think she's different. <laughs> no, like no hate to anyone out there named like Lurleen, but like I feel like if you're thinking of uh, names to like reinvent yourself, that's like I wouldn't even. It's like not even. You had to have you had to have known someone. I feel like for a name like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, like wait, I feel no, like you just what known someone like with that name or known like I I feel like you have to know a, a Lurleen to even like it's like have that name in, that name in your mind. Like, I almost feel like it was like a. Arlene mixed with Lucy. Like she couldn't pick a name and was like, what about Lurley? <laughs> oh, I like that. That's pretty cool. Okay. I'll take it. Sure. I don't know. I mean, I have no idea, but um, it's just so, it's just, I, there's got to be a story there because it's, it's too so original. obscure. I know. I wish, I wish there were more explanation on that because I, I do wonder. 
uh, where that came from. And if your name is Lurleen, please let us know. I'm please very let us know curious. Where, like the origin of that. Yeah, I would love to know. I feel uh, like that's not a name that like you don't come up with that name unless you have a reason for that. It's name. not like in a baby name book, I imagine. So it probably yeah. has some sort of meaning, I would think. Like maybe like someone wanted Lorraine. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, Lur- I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty similar too. Um, yeah, so I'm curious. Yeah, if anybody has that name, let me know. Um, so. Despite naming herself Lurleen, at this point, she decided to basically throw her entire past away and she refused to talk about where she came from or what her background was. And this honestly made her even more alluring and mysterious because you couldn't just look somebody up on Facebook at this point. Like Mm. she just seemed even more mysterious. She just blew into town as Lurleen and nobody knew who she was. I feel like a Lurleen only blows into town. (laughs) She True. doesn't just like walk on in there. <laughs> if your name is Lurleen, let us know. Did you just blow into town? Because like, uh, tell us which town you are currently blowing into, blowing into and blowing out of. I I need yeah. to know. Mm-hmm. Um, and lest we forget, obviously these were the days of the old west. So she was friends with all sorts of old timey outlaws, including Wild Bill Hickok and John Wesley Harden, who um, I covered in Dallas and I covered on the podcast. He, John Wesley Harden, I think he was the one, uh, the man. I think I even wrote about him in the book, actually. Let me make sure I got the name right. Um, I think he was the one who uh, killed a man who snored too loud. (laughs) That was was like... You're just getting it mixed up. Oh, wait. Yeah. That's why you got to make that horrible honking sound. uh, No, I don't. I don't remember you talking about him. Okay. Yeah. He shot a man for snoring. The man so mean he shot a man for snoring. That was like his thing. It was like a few months ago. I think I covered him on the podcast. Um, anyway, so one day a handsome, so she was friends with these guys. One day, a handsome stagecoach robber named Archie McLaughlin, uh, strolled in to her little gambling operation while she was dealing 21 or blackjack and they apparently fell in love instantly. Oh, okay. And Belle, I guess, fell into some old habits. She began using her talents as a spy to get information from stagecoach drivers who came to her gambling tables. She would listen to men as they talked about their roots and what they'd be carrying in their stagecoaches. And then she would tell Archie, who would then intercept the stagecoaches as the outlaw, and then she would get a cut of the profits. So they're doing a little, maybe like a Bonnie and Clyde situation, yeah. like a little, a little tag team in. I think it's fascinating. I think it's I, absolutely fascinating for a woman of that time to be so, like, I mean, obviously criminally, but like business oriented. I also want, like, I, anytime, I don't know why it's more interesting to me when it's like a man and woman duo. It really shouldn't be. I'm, anytime there is like a, a law breaking duo. Yeah. I wonder like how they finally opened up and told each other like i think we should both commit crime together like i'm still trying to figure out how to say that to you no yeah or i wonder to me (laughs) (laughs) or i wonder if it if it's like a gradual thing where it's like oh i heard that they're doing this oh hey i uh stopped them and stole some money thanks for letting me know here's a couple cents here's a couple bucks and like i wonder if it just kind of builds yeah, I don't know what it is, but I, I've always been curious, like, how do you get into that topic with someone and then you both kind of like look at each other like, are you okay You're like, with I'm that? just kidding. Unless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be just so funny Unless. if we robbed a bank? Yeah. <laughs> no. Unless. Um, so, yeah. So basically that's what they did. Uh, she would be the kind of like little spy. And I mean, part of me as a woman finds that very vindicating because it's like, oh, the woman who runs this entire business, the men will just freely talk in front of you about all their business stuff and think yeah. like, oh, you would never understand or pay attention or you know silly, what's dumb going little on. woman. You yeah. dumb little woman. And like, I'm not saying all of them were like that, but I'm saying like, it's kind of weirdly vindicating that like she used her powers of like going to charm school to, you know, take advantage of people. I, it sounds Honestly, bad. Honestly, she's a success story for charm school. For charm <laughs> They probably erased her off the board of alumni, but they still. They should have named a charm school they after her. Named they should have the place after her. should have been like, look what she accomplished I... with the pizzazz and moxie we gave her. Look at this moxie. I She should change her name to moxie, but whatever. What do I know? <laughs> um, so she would give this information. He would 
stall and rob the stagecoaches, and then she would get a cut of the profits. And she actually told Archie, when we get enough, we'll leave here. And who knows, I might even marry you. <gasps> oh. Ooh. Okay. This is a TV show. Somebody call me. Let's write this. This is this, fun. And especially like as a Western, as yeah, an old at, Western. Uh, you Are you know kidding I love me? a cowboy. Come on. Let's They're do gonna it. They're going to ride off into the sunset. Oh, let's do it. Unfortunately, here's where the story turns. One night, she got careless, and she let it slip that there was a robbery planned. And oh. when word got back to the sheriff, they, of course, waited, and they thwarted the robbery, and they caught Belle's love, Archie, in the act of murdering, or not murdering, I guess, stealing from the stagecoach, and they caught one of his men as well and on their way to stand trial in deadwood they were captured by an outlaw named boone may and his vigilantes and unfortunately they hanged them from a tree oh so it got oh. dark really fast sorry that was like all in one breath i all, didn't expect it was it. one bullet <laughs> whoa and as you know i'm learning this with you so i'm improv you, you also didn't see that coming. not not even a tiny bit you're you know. trying to pretend like you're not shocked, but I feel like in your head you went, oh my God, they, went, uh, got, oh shit. they got hanged. <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> yep. Uh, they caught uh. Bell's love, Archie, one of his men, and on their way to their trial, they were caught by vigilantes and hanged before they could even stand trial. Um, after Archie's death, Bell unfortunately fell into a deep depression. She began to drink heavily and unfortunately, she ultimately took an overdose of poison in an attempt to take her own life. But a doctor managed to get to her just in time to save her from death. But oh. um, she basically was like a changed woman after that. Um, she stopped caring about her reputation, her honor, her wealth. She was basically filled with this like vengeful desire to kill Boone May, the guy, the vig group of vig vigilantes who killed her love mm -hmm. uh, for taking him away from her. But instead of getting revenge on them, she just kind of kept on this path of drinking and depression. And she fell deeper and deeper into the state and let everything else fall to the wayside. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very tragic story. And although in the past she had been publicly admired, her, affiliation with like Archie and these roadside robbers kind of turned public opinion on her because they were like, well, why would we side with her? Even right. though she ran right. this great establishment, like she was promoting and helping all these people get robbed on the side yeah. of the road for her own benefit. Um, And so she wasn't even at this point pitied by anybody in town who could have like stepped in and helped her. Um, so she was just kind of left to her own devices. And as a last resort, she was given an official order to leave the Black Hills of South Dakota and never return, which is interesting oh. because she was she took that offer once to leave Missouri and never or like never. Right. Until I was going to say was if, she, if she feels like so, I guess, outcast in this area, why wouldn't she just leave and go change her name again or something? And I think she just had lost that like will to be a big personality yeah. like a, i think she just kind of didn't care about her reputation anymore like she just didn't want to pursue that um but she was kicked out of town so in 1870 she did move to leadville colorado and opened a dance hall that was apparently quite stylish and successful but she didn't stay long um she began to drift through nevada new mexico arizona and she just couldn't bring herself to bring that to find that same charm and allure that she, had she didn't had. have the she wasn't using the x factor anymore yeah she yeah it's almost it. like it didn't matter as much mm -hmm. anymore like she had lost that um and so she didn't bring that to her new businesses and so they didn't fare as well as they had in the past um it also didn't help that uh, along the way she had picked up a new habit called smoking opium Oh, that's quite a habit. Quite a habit. Uh, and she that's was still, not that's not just like a that's not a making xenon and paper mache situation. No, yeah, it's not even just a hobby. It's like a yeah, that's full tough. on detrimental habit. Uh huh. Um, and she was also still drinking quite heavily. So pretty soon, her mind, her health, and her beauty, which obviously doesn't matter, except that that's what she used to kind of, you know. A, like lure people and um influence men and make her businesses successful all of that kind of 
was it was how she made her whole lifestyle yeah yeah her whole like presentation basically was compromised and so kind of her businesses just didn't succeed like they used to so bell was arrested near death uh unfortunately in 1881 in san francisco and she was brought to the hospital ward of a san francisco prison where a chaplain urged her to ease her conscience by confessing the story of her past and for the first time ever in this moment, Belle finally pieced together the facts of her life and told the story of her journey from Southern Belle to Civil War spy to Blackjack dealer and now to here in this prison in 1881. Wow. Oh, yeah. So Belle Siddons died in jail in 1881. She was only 41 years old. Very oh. young. There are no specifics as to where she's buried, but it's probably in the Golden Gate Cemetery in San Francisco. And to this day, Belsons is memorialized actually in a local parade in Deadwood, South Dakota, where oh. she rides alone in a carriage dressed in luxurious robes and feathers or like <gasps> somebody, you know, representing her, obviously. Yeah, with diamonds and rubies, maybe. With diamonds and rubies in their hair. Oh. <laughs> um. Also, sorry, I know you said that she died at 41. I was just like, I feel like she sounds like she lived such a life. A full I, life. It didn't, I guess maybe if you, what year was, what, this is the 1800s? Yeah, yeah. So she died in 1881 um, and we don't know what year, but she was born in the 1830s. So I, I guess if we know that she died, I, th I think all of it's kind of an estimate. Um, I also like, I always think like, oh, well, they died so young, but then I'm like, Back then, people started their lives so much earlier. Like, maybe she yeah, was just, like, out running around at 12 or something. Right, like, people know. people started... Yeah, I feel like childhood maybe was shorter, in a way, mm -hmm. uh, in relative terms, compared to now. Maybe. Um, but, yes, yeah, she lived a very varied life. A very... Uh, <laughs> very it had quite a range. It had a range, <laughs> for uh -huh. sure. Um, and so, you know, she, she had an interesting life. Again, if someone wants to make a movie about this, like, give me a ringer, you know, <laughs> get me on the horn. Oh, yeah. Uh, the ringer, the horn, honk, honk. I will honk for my bed. You'll hear me. Honk. <laughs> will honk for movie opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> will honk for next great screenplay. Um, apparently in this note, uh, I put Gemini horoscope because she was a Gemini. Did oh, I? we don't know did, that she was a Gemini, do we? Uh, maybe you did at a different time, but Christine. also interesting that it I is. I think I made it up. I think I made up that she's a Gemini. Well, also, well, it's Gemini season. Maybe that's, was it Gemini season when you did this last time? No, January 20th. <laughs> oh, huh. I got nothing then. I think, I mean, even the fact that during this session of notes, you were like, oh, Christine, were we talking about that? I feel like you were like talking about me in this context. I was talking about well, earlier today. I don't know, like charm school and all that. Like, well, I maybe... was talking about Gemini season about how you, uh, what'd you call yourself? You called yourself spontaneous to a detriment. Yeah. And then I said, oh, and then you said that's, that's pretty, because I said it's, it is two personalities. And that was Sometimes about you... me doing this, these notes. So uh -huh. it wasn't really about the story. It was just, huh. Sometimes I feel like when we have conversations, there's no full circles. They just become like <laughs> spider webs. Like, because it feels like we ended up running back into a previous conversation. Yeah. But sometimes that previous conversation was from like 13 weeks ago and we yeah. finally just finished it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, see, it all connects. And you're like, both of us like, are like, I think I, it doesn't really make sense where it, we. It connects all the way back to 2019. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you finally. remember. We and then finally someone on Twitter that. is invariably like, Oh, yeah, I remember it's episode 222. And we're like, <laughs> oh, okay, perfect. See, we knew. Um, wow. Okay, so I did write a Gemini horoscope. I assume I just decided she was a Gemini based on her many faces. Like her Geminis are often described as like being two faced and kind of like the fact that she was a spy and was using her quote unquote charm to like elicit basically gossip <laughs> and then tell it to the other people. That does feel like something both of us would not totally deny wanting to do ourselves. Yeah. Like clearly we were drawn to her for a reason. And I, mm -hmm. again, not in the context of war, obviously, but like, you know, I mean, it's, 
I feel like it fits kind of. So I guess I got a Gemini, what I back then called a horror scope. So I'll just read it. Uh, Mm -hmm. And this was of the day that I announced the story or told the story in St. Louis. So here we go. Volcanic eruptions? Question mark. The ego driven sun and volatile Uranus. Uranus? How do you say that? I, well, I, I think everyone wants to say Uranus, but I think the right way is actually Uranus. Okay. I've started saying Uranus cause I just like couldn't even, I didn't want to go there. Okay. <laughs> the ego. Well, driven- cause one's Uranus and one's Uranus. Urine. They're not like, much better. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just change your whole name. You planet. Just <laughs> <laughs> change your name to Lur, Lur, what was her name? Lorraine. L- Lorinus. Lorraine. Wait. A Wait. <laughs> Lorenus. Well, what was her? <laughs> Lorenus. <laughs> Stupid. Okay. <laughs> the ego driven son and volatile Lorenus could get rivalries and group conflicts boiling like hot lava. Hmm. Is your own urge to micromanage turning a collaboration into a dictatorship? <laughs> Uh, and then this is for us, apparently. Been thinking of launching a blog or a podcast? Do something yeah. toward that in the next two weeks. Honestly, it's the one thing she never did. Oh, and honestly, maybe she lives on through us, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, 100%. Uh, at least only in that way, in that way only. In that <laughs> way only, to be clear. Um. Wow. No wonder you found that uh, horoscope online and you were like, Th- that'll do <laughs> i was like honestly good a guess as any that she was born in the month of end of may or june yep you never know so anyway that's the story of southern bell bell siddons slash mrs vest vestibule vestal. or something <laughs> mrs. Vestal. vestibule miss vestal slash, slash lorraine or lorraineus lurlene lurlene oh. that's what it was lurlene she's got a she's got a bunch of names i uh she's got three names my story had three different names we're just <gasps> true every everyone loves a nickname this week uh and we're technically ending gemini season now but as we mm. record this we're still in it right so like yeah going out with a bang you know at least we are. By the time everyone's listening to this, I, I don't know. But you and but like, I are for sure. This is the last day of Gemini season. I feel like um, as people listen to this, like they just know that um, we held on to it as long as we possibly could. We sure did. White knuckled. White, White knuckled, knuckled it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Knuckle well, and buckle. Well, that was, you know what? That one made me feel really safe, Christine. And I appreciate it because I know next week is going to be a yeah and that's Fucking a thing roller coaster. i just want to warn everybody i wanted to do a buffer before i really dove into that one and it's 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 rough so my only request is after next week you give us another light-hearted bantery one again great idea. because great idea. because whoa this is i'm already nervous i'm gonna maybe eat cheesecake next week afterwards as why like don't a, we just r- order cheesecake afterward why don't we order cheesecake before good idea and after i know what i'm doing now you're talking (laughs) i've been talking this whole time you're just finally listening okay well uh good job christine that was a that was a tasty a tasty morsel of a story oh thank you em good job to you too thank you i i can't wait to tell you more alien things next week me too oh what are you up to for the rest of the day anything good you know um drinking wine recording two patreon chats bonus after chats with you ah and then i am just chillax and at shay atwwd geo's castle geo's castle that's the one oh and that's why we drink <laughs>